How did we even come up with the concept of heart storming? It's much like getting in the zone like we do in sports, but for business. We can sync up our heart coherence and say, I have this feeling. Now, we haven't ever done this yet, but can you feel my vibe? Just get in my own way. So heart storming, it feels more expansive. Heart storming is that linking together of infinite potential based on what each of us have as our perception of infinite potential. Brainstorm to me is like kind of doing what's already been done. But when we want to do something that hasn't been done before, that's where we need that next level insight from beyond here. Heart storming helps support that. Hey, Heart Leader community, this is Amber Mikesell, and I am so excited. Silent Your Inner Critic has a release date. We'll be hitting shelves March of 2025, and you have an opportunity to get on the wait list by clicking the link below. And when you do, you're going to immediately get a gift from me. It is the Silent Your Inner Critic Starter Kit, where you'll get 13 tips to get started on silencing your inner critic before the book hits the shelves. We're in the process of trademarking a term that we use all the time in Suivera. And even when we're seeking to talk about topics for the Heart Leader podcast, and that's called heart storming. And when we've shared it with other individuals, they're like, what is heart storming? So we thought it might be a really good idea to talk about what heart storming is for us and why we use it so much in our day-to-day. -day. What makes it different than kind of brainstorming? What's the unique factor that we find that takes us like just in a little different space than brainstorming? And how did we even come up with the concept of heart storming that gives us that different feel? when we come to the table in that way. So would you like to kick us off? And what is heart storming to you when we as the leadership team come together and say, all right, it's time for a heart storm. What does that mean to you? Yeah, to me, it means... Well, first and foremost, for me, it's almost an energy that's that's really there's there's a an, an energy around it that i connect with that i identify and it's almost one of those things that even though even before we even said it knew what it was like once we did say it i actually knew what it was it took time to effectively communicate what it was and i'm probably still even a little bit unsure to some degree um, but for me what it what it specifically means to me uh, as I verbalize it, it's it it's much like getting in the zone for like we do in sports, but for business. And what it does is it gets me out of my head where I get stuck in these loops and too logical and uh, and oftentimes when I'm too logical, I just get in my own way. So with heart storming, it's it feels more expansive and. But also for me is like, it kind of reminds me of what we talk about, the difference between human consciousness and universal consciousness. So human consciousness, uh, just for kind of a, a quick context, is, is limited to uh, uh, just the human experience from kind of almost like brain to brain, if you will. We call it collective consciousness here. It's kind of the same reason why um, scientists have really explored this in many different ways, showing Oh, when some person is working on something and another person or group of people halfway around the world are working on something and it's the same thing at the same time, it's never been done. And, you know, why is that? That's a weird phenomenon. Or like once the person, you know, beat the five minute mile or something, I think it was five minute or four minute, whatever it was, it was like, hey, it hadn't been recorded. And then all of a sudden, like, boom, it just started happening like uh, relatively quite a bit. And so there's this connection that we have you know, through collective consciousness, through the brain, uh, because it's a physical standpoint in uh, a physical manifestation in this physical realm. But when we talk about universal consciousness, 
that's beyond the human experience. That's beyond this earth plane experience. That's when we have these soul level insights, these, these things that come forward through our hearts into our brain and then through our thoughts and then through our conversation and out into the world through doing and manifestation uh, that are like evolutionary in terms of, okay, this is going to jump us to the next level. Yeah. And so that's heart-based because our heart is, is expansive and universal and our brain is limited to the human experience. And so when, and the reason why I'm kind of bringing this whole context together is that's kind of what helps when we heart storm versus brainstorm brainstorm to me is like kind of doing what's already been done, which isn't a bad thing, right? We can learn from what's been done. We can be more efficient. We can be more connected, but when we want to do something that hasn't been done before, that's where we need that next level insight from beyond here. And so heart storming helps support that. That's a great explanation as far, you know, just to sit with it and have that understanding. Because when I think of the creative process, it goes from that intuitive insight, right? Where something is just not fully formed, but you have this sense that something is possible. And then you bring it into that formation of it, right? So there isn't a solid thought of it yet, right? So you have to have the feel of it first. And that's where heart storming comes into play because it hasn't really been formulated. You have that feel of the creation first and that willingness to be vulnerable and say, I don't know what it is yet, but this is the feel of it. And to me, what you're talking about with the quantum entanglement aspect of the human consciousness, thoughts link us together, right? From that human state of consciousness. So the moment it's been done, then we know what's possible. So we've collapsed it from that realm of potentiality into actuality, and we know that it's possible. Then all of a sudden it sparks in so many other realms of possibility instead of potentiality, if we want to look at it that way. Well, our hearts are that space, that bridge in between, right? Where we're pulling it down from the realm of infinite potentiality into what will be actuality. And we're in the formation process, that creative formation process. And as humans, we have heart coherence. So where we're not able to think up in the thought yet, because it hasn't been actualized, which is where thought starts, right? But we have that heart coherence. So we can sync up our heart coherence and say, I have this feeling. Now, we haven't ever done this yet, but can you feel my vibe? Can you get on this wave with me, this wave of creation and potentiality and leave nothing off the table, get fear out of the zone, fear of failure, fear of limitation, and let's explore what's possible if all of that's gone. And let's build each other up in that container because what you believe is possible and what I believe is possible could be two totally different containers. But by joining that together, now our container just got so much bigger because we are in this realm, right? We're in this experience. And whether I like it or not, I can say I believe in infinite potentiality, but that infinite potentiality is based on my experience here. Your infinite potentiality is based on your experience here because we haven't experienced anything different, right? And so by linking all of that together through heart coherence and that in-between stage, we've just expanded our innovative potential. And so heart storming is that linking together of infinite potential based on what each of us have as our perception of infinite potential. And to me, it's like poof, every time we do it, 
we don't come to the table as individuals with thoughts of brainstorming and just dumping ideas as I'm like dumping, <laughs> <laughs> dumping actions. Um, we don't come with it that way. Like I have all these ideas. Let me just dump every thought in my head out. We come from this heart centered, let's be purposeful in every connection and create this together. Yeah. Does I that make that. sense? Absolutely. I'm passionate does. about this. If you can't tell, <laughs> this is important. It is. Yeah. And I appreciate you utilizing your master's in quantum science tech, you know, a terminology to really explain, uh, it, this could the capacity of heart storming uh, just at a deeper level so thank you for that those are a lot of terms that uh you know don't often get used in this type of way and so i i just appreciate it oh well, thank you and yeah it is exciting because like for us with sui vera we're doing something you know in some ways that has been done before but in other ways has never been done before right and and there's a, it's not like we're the only organization you know in that experience, and so I know one of the struggles in the very beginning was for us was uh, even you know whether it was naming it naming the organization or saying well how do we want to lay the foundation how do we want to do the creed you know all these aspects and that's kind of where this whole heart storming concept really brought forward because we said hey we don't what's what's been done before has worked in some ways, but has really hurt it, hurt humanity in a lot of ways, right? Yeah. And so if we want to create something new, we don't want to use energy that's that's been used to hurt people. We want to use energy that is new and evolved and heart-centered, heart-focused and love-focused, connected, unity, oneness, all the things that a lot of these different faiths, philosophies, ideologies throughout human history, you know, there is a common thread as, as we've talked about. And love. So, love. Yes. Love. <laughs> so how do we start to do, how do we take the best of what's been done and meld it with uh, what's next in the human evolution, that which hasn't been done yet? And so heart storming is a great practice and almost a meditation in some way to, uh, to activate that. Yes. And I'm glad you talk about meditation because that is a great way to start a heart storming mm -hmm. approach, right? And I know, wow, when we first started, having a meditation to kick off a meeting was very taboo, very taboo. Fortunately, there has been so much progress in this space that it is not as taboo now to start a business meeting by having a coherence meditation where you sync up the team by using breath or by starting with some binaural beats or brainwave music, just something to get everybody on the same, you know, we say we're on the same wavelength. Well, there's literal science behind that, right? When we start on the same wavelength, then we're much more able to come together as a cohesive team, whether that's the same thought patterns or we don't want to think exactly the same, right? You're not going to go to the next level if everyone's coming to the table with the same thoughts, but the same united purpose in thought. And so same Wavelength means we're working toward the same overall purpose, but coming at it from different sides of the coin, right? So there's something to that, but you have to sync up to be able to point toward that same overall purpose, that same mission, that same movement. And companies and organizations are starting to really embrace that and see the movement toward it. But I can tell you when I first, or when we first started, when I first started in the beginning and we weren't a we yet, and then we became a we, that was not a thing. And we would go into organizations and they were like, are you a cult? Mm -hmm. 
Well, no, we really desire to bring everyone into the same coherence and therefore unify the forward movement of the purpose. And the strength that we find from that is heart blowing. I want to say mind blowing, but it really is heart blowing. You walk out of there and you feel the expanse of nature of the purpose you're moving toward. And if you don't, then you start to reevaluate your purpose. Like, is this what, what we truly intend or is there another way to go about this? Yeah, well said. That's a great point because oftentimes we can feel stuck. And so if we are brainstorming around something and we feel like, well, man, I feel stuck. I can't, I can't move past this. Well, brainstorming is part of the problem in my, in my opinion. Sometimes. And it's, it's, it's sometimes we get, we're just hitting our head against the wall in that sense. And, and we can't feel the expansiveness from a closed off experience. And so that's why I do love the heart storm. And that's why I also really like the idea of it is, is kind of getting more into the zone because in, in like athletes, they'll say when they, you know, I'm going to use the word try, even though I don't like it, but <laughs> uh, attempt. Yeah. When they, uh, when they, uh, the term is like when I try harder, right. Mm -hmm. it's, it's when I attempt harder, it just sounds kind of weird, but, um, but like go after something with more vigor. Yeah, there we go. And There's always a way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's like you can, you can, you can actually tell. It almost feels like a forcing mm -hmm. uh, to, to do what you know you're capable of doing. Uh, and there's athletes who have been spending years and years and years and they know what they need to do and they've done it a thousand times, but it's a, it's like all of a sudden it's just not either. It's not connected. It's not flowing. They feel stuck and it's just not coming. And then they'll, they'll, attempt more and more and put more effort into it. And then it actually just gets worse and worse and worse. Yeah. Right. And then into the moment they kind of let go and get into the zone. And so they're no longer thinking what they need to do. It's almost like a trust and it's an allowance and it's a surrender. And that happens in the heart. That doesn't happen in the head. And so when they get into that standpoint, then it's like the body just knows you know, like you're in full trust. So you just, you just allow and there are times when athletes say, oh, I don't even, I don't even remember like what, what just happened. I feel like I just woke up, you know, I, I don't even know what happened the last hour or two hours or whatever the experience. I know I've played golf my some of my best rounds of golf. I was like four hours and I'm like, I don't, I don't even know what just happened. Right. And so that's kind of when we're so much in our heads, that's kind of what can happen with brainstorming. And so heart storming is this great, um, great practice that can be integrated to allow one to get in the zone in business as well. Yes. And what you're explaining, I know as in the acting community, it's the same thing. So it is, it transfers into any practice that you're in, whether that is, or any business you're in, if it's in sport and it's in film and acting it goes to the heart of whatever we're doing in life. If we can get into that place of trust, which you're right, our thoughts are not going to get us there, but our heart, our soul is going to navigate us into knowing that no matter what we do is going to be fine. It's really going to be okay. And even if it looks like failure, it's learning and it's not going to define us in that moment unless we give it permission to define us, right? And by heart storming and understanding and doing in each moment being purposeful, then that moment doesn't define us. The purpose begins to move us toward what we desire instead. And that desire doesn't even define us. It's just an experience. Our being in that moment is what's defining the moment instead. Right. And that is so freeing. And we've been asked, like, how do you know if you're in your heart or if you're in your head? It's a very valid question. 
And the only answer I can give is if one, if you're thinking about it, then you probably already have your answer. And two, there is a visceral, a physical feeling that you get when you are in, like if you have a gut-wrenching fear or feeling, you feel that, like literally you feel it in your stomach. If you are in your heart, you can literally feel your heart expand, your shoulders go back, and you're just like settled in this area of your body. And if you're thinking in your head, everything starts to kind of almost fold in a little bit, like maybe not fully, but a little bit, you'll start to feel yourself fold in because all that energy is going up to this processing center. And suddenly you feel very heavy in your head because everything's like pulling up to support this. So Yeah, that's good awareness. Yeah. You make a really good point. If you're if you're overthinking it, if you're wondering if, if you're in it, then you're probably not. Um, so that's good. But I, I think it's also important to highlight that we've we've all been in it in some way. And it could be just while we're simply taking a walk or a jog, or while we're driving, or while we're with our family, or um, painting, or playing sports or in business or I mean there's so many different approaches that it could be uh, and oftentimes we we do have the ability uh, to notice it without having to drop or to pull back up into the head and that's that's something that I think was for me was was a great awareness the more that I brought a, intention you know, or attention to it when I was in those moments or am in those moments, then it actually allows me to dive deeper without having to pull back into the head. Because like sometimes I'd be like, oh, I'm I'm in it, and then <laughs> and then I'm like over here yeah, and there, and then I overthink, and then it's like, oh no, I'm back and I lost it, you know. And it's and so that's that's and the athletes will say that they're like, oh, I was in the zone, and then I just completely lost it. And it's it is a state that we can not only activate but actually remain in. Um, and there is a way to effectively bring attention and awareness to it without pulling ourselves out of it. And the more that we bring that attention and awareness to it, the more that we can be intentional in activating it. And so that's kind of, that's been a huge, huge benefit and help uh, for me and one that I'm actually currently practicing right now. Well, you can't tease people and say there's a way and then not share the way that you, you, stay in that heart centered space, because that's one of the other things that when we talk to people, it's okay. So how do I get out of brainstorming? Because we've been taught, I know coming up from a corporate culture, brainstorming sessions were all the rage, right? Let's get together. Let's brainstorm. No idea is off limits. They really were because if they didn't like your idea, they would shoot you down in a heartbeat. But no ideas are off limits. Let's get in there. And so you really start thinking through. So how do you get from that trained approach to, okay, now they're asking me to be in this heart-centered space where I'm feeling into all the things that could be possible in my world and offering that not from a thought perspective of could this work according to the market and according to no it's really and truly in the realm of all things that i know to be possible what's coming forward and there is nothing that is out of bounds at this moment let's just sync up and move forward from that space of love, connection, and all things possible. How do you get from here to there? Yeah. Um, well, I apologize if I, I, from what I was seeking to communicate was that the attention was the way. Okay. Um, so if I wasn't clear on that, I apologize. I was attempting to say that there is a way and that is the way for me. Okay. And that's, that's what I'm saying. I'm currently practicing in that is by bringing more attention to when I'm in those moments so that I can activate it on demand. Okay. So what does attention look like? I think that might be a beneficial 
bridge connector for anybody listening to this, right? So attention could mean you do tapping to bring attention to it, right? Or is it as easy for you as just noticing and bringing your awareness back? That might not be as easy for everyone. So how do you do it? That's a good question. Okay. I see where you're going with that. Uh, so for me, it's, um, a couple things when I notice it, not invoking fear of losing it. The moment I invoke fear of losing it is the moment I pop right back up into my head. Okay. Oh my gosh. It's yeah. gone. It's gone. Yeah. Or like, oh, I don't, I'm in it. Like, I don't want to lose. I want to stick in this. And then, and then it's like, then the, the activation of like forcing things starts to be, cause I, I want to stay in it. But then that's that you're no longer surrendering. You're attempting to direct the flow versus allow it. And so what I'm actively practicing right now is noticing it, bringing attention to it, and then actively setting, settling into it. And so there can be ways like where I can have a visual in my head. I'm a very visual person. I like to see visualizations like I just... That's just for me the way things flow. So I can't say this will work for everyone, but um, if if you do process like me, this might really help. But I actually I feel and see like when I'm in that moment, I like I, I take notice of it, I settle into it, and I feel this this light just move all from my head into my heart. And then I put almost like a cap, <laughs> like, nope, <laughs> like this is not going beyond, like it's staying under my chin <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and it's just, it's staying below. And then I just, I feel this container in my heart and then, and then I just seek to kind of let go and, and just slow down. That's another aspect. When I, I notice that when I get into my head, I start to move quicker. And, and I don't mean one can slow down and, and still move quickly. And I, and that's an interesting concept, uh, because like, for example, like last night in pickleball, right. You know, I was, I was explaining to you last night when I got back, like, man, I was hitting some of the shots and some of the things that I've never done before because I'm actively doing this practice. And I have the same amount of reflex, but why are shots going where they want and being executed versus not? And it's because even though I have the same amount of reflex in, 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 in action, like it's, it's still quick. I feel like I have more time to actually execute them when I'm in the heart, when I'm in the pause, when I'm in the allowance. And so it's, it's still quick, but it almost is, it's like the time expands within that. It and is so, crazy. Yeah. You're a time morpher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I know, I mean, like race car drivers, golf to golfers, to athletes. I mean, there's, I mean, we've all experienced this in many different ways. Oh yeah. People who work in ERs talk about it all the right. time. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doctors. Exactly. Um, so uh, doctors, nurses, med medicine, I mean, there's, uh, and, and this can even happen, like even when you're driving, I mean, this, this definitely happens. Uh, you talk about microwave minutes yeah. versus shower minutes, exactly. right? Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yes. Microwave minutes versus shower minutes. Shower minutes seem to go so fast. It feels like, you know, 20 minutes of shower, shower feels like three minutes and then three minutes of microwave when you're just staring at it, it feels like 20 minutes. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, it's, uh, it's that to me is that, that, that surrender, that allowance and that presence. And maybe that's really by paying attention and saying, I'm, I'm willing to be actively in the present moment. So often we spend the present moment looking into the past or looking into the future. And so it's hard to be in the present when we're constantly time traveling in that sense. And so if we can actually pull in and just say, hey, no, I'm actually in this now moment and then let the now moments unfold through intention, then we can actually utilize them to our greatest capacity. Yeah. And I've also found that so many people are afraid of the present moment mm -hmm. because there is so much power in the present. 
And I don't mean that in any type of a stealing of an individual's power away. It's to have someone look and say, am I harnessing all of the energetic power that I have by being present? And when I am in the past or I'm in the future, then I'm not harnessing all of my energetic power that I have in the present moment. And there's a lot of fear that can go with being with your own personal power, right? And I understand that. But when we connect with that personal power and we see the limitless nature of what we can do with it, that also helps us with that heart-centered connection. Because then you have what you were talking about with paying attention That power, that personal energy is the currency, and I mean energetic current. It's the currency that we can utilize to build the creative life that we desire. And when we're not present, then we're not pulling in our own personal current, our own personal currency to spend to build the life we desire, if that makes sense, if we're looking at it from an energetic standpoint. And it's it's scary to say that I have the personal power to pull in the energy that I desire to then spend that currency building something I desire. Now, maybe it's not the full life you desire, You know, we're co-creating in this wonderful experience, but it is enough that I can sync together with others and we can move towards something together, right? If we all pull our currency, then we can build something together, but that that keeps us present. And that's where I like Ted Lasso so much (laughs) because it is about building that team that is very present together, very vulnerable with each other, very connected. And even he was fighting his own things. And he had to utilize breath and breathe deep and tell himself often, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And return himself to his own present moment and his own personal power, his own currency, so that he could share that with his team. And he also knew when to step away and let others take the helm. And when we talk about heart storming, that's heart storming in action. Like they would, yes, they would think about plays, but there are so many scenes where plays flowed through. They weren't brainstorming. They were heart storming and they were connected and they were feeling through what's needed in this moment right yeah there's a framework and a structure but it was fluid i like that yeah that makes sense yeah i mean that's i think what you're bringing forward is is such a a fascinating approach And, and as you're as you're talking about it it's helping me recognize the expansive nature of of heartstorming even at a greater capacity, even though we've been doing it for quite a few years now. Um, but I, I didn't view it as you were talking about kind of the past and the, and the future and being in the present, you know, so much of our, of our human experience, like if we're looking at this spiritually, you know, so much of our human experience, uh, is, is a linear experience. We, we look at the past and we look to the future, uh, to determine our actions, right? Uh, and, and a lot of the past and the future also determine the way we think, the way we, approach life it's it's uh if we allow it yeah. right um it's not a have to it's just that's just in many ways how we are conditioned um but if we look at the like when we're we're on a soul level and we we t- a lot of faith or philosophy may even talk about the soul and how the soul is eternal well there isn't linear time in eternity you know, that's a circular time, 
right? And so that's, that's always the ever present now. And so when we choose to be in the present moment, we're seeking to activate and embody the eternal version of our soul into this now moment in a linear experience. And so we do, that's where, like you always say, the power is in the pause. And I love that. And that's really hitting home for me on so many levels uh, in my life right now. I mean, we were just talking about that in, in, in different ways. And, and I'm, it's fun to see the evolution, the expansion of it. But at the same time, I feel like heart storming is such a great practice to invoke that. It's, it's saying you know, we're, we're not necessarily we're not necessarily looking at the result of it or the future or the past. We're allowing the expansive nature of the eternal circular of all the potential, all the limitless possibilities and seeking to collapse it into this experience so we can have a linear experience of that. Exactly. And that is, that is so powerful. Yes. And we are so excited to share that with any group of people, whether it's an organization, whether it is a business or a family. We do it with our families. When we come together and we're seeking to have move from one experience to another experience, or we're moving toward a common goal. Heart storming is a wonderful way to initiate that or do what we call pulse checks right on it. And we are so happy to share what we have learned and then take it and make it your own right? We are not a prescriptive organization. We do not say, here is the way. Take it and follow it. We say, here is a way. Take it and adapt it. And to us, that's very important. We are going to share what we know fits for us. Now take it. And if that fits for you the way that it is, oh, that's awesome. That means that there's less effort on your part. But if it doesn't, then take it and adapt it to what fits for you and then share it because then that might help somebody else spark what fits for them. And that's what creates a connected community where we're all lifting each other up as we continue to move forward on our own journey. Yeah, it's a beautiful statement and embodiment of what it means to heart storm. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for heart storming with me. Yeah, this was a heart storm. <laughs> that was fun. It was a yeah, heart storm. It was like realizations through the process and <laughs> expansive ex experiences. And just, you know, even though this has been a part of, of our daily or regular flow, not necessarily daily, I mean, to some degree daily, but, um, but more effectively, like we'll set aside specific times for heart storming. Um, on a regular basis so between ourselves, our family, our team, uh, business, et cetera. Um, but it was really f fun even in this to, uh, to see heart storming at a new level. So that just continues to show its expansive nature. <laughs> it's like real time. It's happening. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And if you are interested in learning more, definitely reach out to us at info, I-N-F-O, at suivera.org or wherever you are, you can drop a comment and we will happily respond. We love chatting with you. We also have a lot of information out here on whatever platform you're listening to us on as the Heart Leader Podcast. We love bringing new and innovative information to you to continue to support you. So take a few moments, explore the library. And if you'd like to continue to explore what we have to offer, we are getting ready to launch Silence Your Inner Critic. It will hit shelves as a book March 4th of 2025. You can join the wait list. We have a link wherever you're listening to this, but it is silenceyourinnercritic.com. You can hop on over there, join the wait list, and then you'll receive a gift 
from me. And leading up to March 4th, 2025, you'll continue to receive great information and support for silencing that villainous inner critic. You can also continue to explore right here on the Heart Leader podcast for wonderful information, tools, tips, and personal growth. 